Last month, I sent you all out to complete a photography challenge. A challenge to capture the subject of water. And you certainly have not disappointed. Hundreds of you from all over the world have been out embracing this challenge. And with almost 1,000 images sent my way, it's now time to sit down and share some of the most creative images that you captured. Oh my goodness, what a month it's been. Before we start looking at everybody's images, I just want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you who took part in this challenge. It's been an absolute joy to look through all of your images and it sounds like many of you got a lot out of this challenge as well, which is fantastic. Now, if you missed out on taking part in the water challenge, fear not, because in my next video, I'll be announcing the next challenge subject for you all to get involved with. But for now, I'm gonna share with you some of the images that were submitted into the water challenge. I've said all along that this is not a competition. The images I am gonna share with you, however, have been chosen to showcase the diversity of photography and also in an effort to inspire you all to see the many opportunities that are available to you when you're out with your camera. Now, it's been a real challenge for me to decide which photographs to showcase in this video because there were so many incredible photos taken during this challenge. But what I've done is chosen 10 images that really stood out to me and I'm going to talk through them and share why I feel they've stood out and then at the end of the video I'm going to do a slideshow of many of the other images that were submitted that also really excelled in this challenge too. Please note that everything I say in this video is subjective, as is photography. If you would, however, like to share your own thoughts and feelings on the images, please feel free to do so in the comments below. But please do be kind because it is brave for every single person who entered this challenge to share their images and to have them showcased on a video like this. And in case any of you are wondering where I am right now, I'm currently in my dad's Hobbit house. He spent six weeks over this summer building this house in his garden. It's made from 100% recycled materials and even all of the ornaments and that inside of the, the Hobbit house itself have all come from our local recycling centre. So I thought it was a nice wee spot to come and sit this morning, enjoy a bit of nature and the light coming in. Uh, and with that in mind, let's begin sharing all of your images. The first image is this absolutely beautiful shot here by Lee Ayers. And I instantly fell in love with it because of the creative element to it. So I've been kind of toying with how she photographed this and there could be a number of ways she did it, but we've of course got the out of focus effect here with the bokeh of what I'm guessing is reflected light on water with it being the water theme and the water challenge and I'm guessing that the the gull here the gull's head is also reflected on the water this image could possibly be a double exposure I'm not quite sure but I'm guessing it was probably taken in one image with the this beautiful gull shadow and the beautiful light reflected on the water but this just caught my eye straight away because of the creative element of it really showcasing how kind of breaking the rules in photography not always having your images in focus when you're doing something creative can create something unique and different and of course there's tens if not hundreds of thousands of wildlife photographers in the world and to see somebody photographing a bird in a different and unique way it just really caught my eye and I had to include this image in this video. Now this image here of the edge of the sea by Neek Fatherman it's just, it, I think this image is beautiful because of the simplicity of it. Now we so often go to the beach and we often are photographing the crashing waves. We may include the whole sea in a landscape shot or we may walk along the wet sand and photograph the shapes and the textures within it. But I thought it was really nice to see somebody who's used a fast shutter speed to capture the little frothy bits of, of the sea as it's coming into land and merging with, with the beach and the, the sand here. And I think for me it's just that, that element here of using that fast shutter speed to get the bubbles and the foam really sharp in this image. It's, it's a very simple shot but as you'll see from, from many of the images that have been, been included in this that very simple images are usually the best and 
having that textures and that patterns and showcasing the different elements of nature and capturing these subjects that I'm doing as part of this challenge in different ways is what it's all about. And it's just nice to see somebody capturing a different part of the sea that most people would just walk by. And this is really why I've included this in this 10 images, is just to help you all think a little bit about every single element of the water and how you can incorporate that into photographs and find interest within nature. And also speaking about incorporating every part of water in your photographs, this is a beautiful photograph taken by Janet Jameson in the beautiful Cala Miller in Spain. And I believe this is actually a pool, which I'm guessing was probably taken in a hotel resort. And I love this because when I kind of set this challenge, I expected people to, to mostly maybe go out into nature or photograph water maybe in their home using you know taps and, and bottles. But I never thought anybody would photograph a swimming pool. And I think it's amazing because it showcases that even when you're on holiday and you're relaxing and enjoying your, your time away, there is literally photo, photo opportunities everywhere. And photographing the pool when you're on holiday and that gorgeous blue light, which of course is enhanced by the, the blue tiles and everything underneath the water, you can create some beautiful effects. And Janet actually submitted a few images of the pool and the different effects of the water depending on how it was moving. But this image really stood out to me because of the, the kind of fractured light that's dancing on the right hand side of the image. And it's photography. Of course, photography is all about light and having that beautiful light and seeing that little bit of the sun dancing on the water and that combination of the way the water's moving and the different shades of turquoise and blue in this image. You could look at this for, for hours and just keep seeing different things within it. It's, again, it's a very simple shot, but it's, it's a part of water that many people don't photograph and a location which most of us probably would never think of getting our cameras out, which yeah, is why I think it, it really stood out to me. And this image here is beautiful. I imagine it was taken either pre-sunrise or post-sunset, having this beautiful purple light here on the water. And you've got this lovely tree hanging over the water's edge here with the droplets of water coming down. And just to be able to capture this like this with a very fast shutter speed and have that ripple of water frozen in time. It's just such a beautiful image. And to be able to get that water droplet hitting the water at the exact moment it does so and with the ripple effect coming out. Again, it's a very simple shot. But it's beautiful. There's a little bit of symmetry going on here, but it's showcasing really the, the fragility of the, the surface of the water and how the droplets or anything hitting the surface of the water can cause this reaction to go throughout it. And yeah, it's a good reminder, this image of that, and also about how getting out at certain times of the day and photographing in certain light conditions can create beautiful colours and effects which is, is just, just beautiful. So yeah, great, great shot here. Now this image really blew me away. So this is taken by Ivor in Vancouver. And I love this because it showcases, again, the diversity of water and how you don't always have to go out purely into nature, to the sea or to rivers to find water. You can photograph it in towns and cities. And here you've got this beautiful shot of this coloured painted wall with all these beautiful colours of the rainbow on it. And you've got somebody walking around with an umbrella to you know, obviously showcase that it's raining. And I'm guessing this was, was shot through a window of some sort. So you've got the, the beautiful droplets of water in focus with the person with an umbrella and the nice lines in the background blurred out here. And it's really showing how using certain depth of field and focusing on certain elements within your image and blurring out the rest of them can create a really interesting and creative shot. And all the elements are brought together here. You've got beautiful colour which draws your eye in. You've got the, the kind of murky effect, the mysterious effect of, of the water going across the the front of, of the image and then you've got that person, that element and it's really the person with the umbrella in this shot that makes it. Without that person it just 
wouldn't be quite as interesting. It would still be nice, but that person really brings this shot to life. Just an image that's a little bit different and really caught my eye. And like I say, it's it's showcasing that you don't have to be in in nature, nature to to photograph these subjects. You know, a lot of you, I imagine, live in in big cities and towns, so there's literally opportunities everywhere if you you take the time to look for them. Now I had to showcase this image here. This is taken by by Frederick, and the reason is because it really showcases how simple images in photography really work. So the more simple an image is, often the most impactful it is because it's got a really clear focus. You've got just one or two subjects in the image. You've not got loads of stuff going on in the background. And here you've got this beautiful still day here. Um, I imagine this was shot probably at, at dawn. It could have obviously been dusk as well, but I'm just feeling with the newness and the freshness of the light here that it was probably a very early morning shoot and you've got the simplicity here of the beautiful twigs reflecting on this water the stillness and calmness of the water and that in conjunction with the beautiful blue light that you can see the, the clouds and the sky reflected here on the water and it really is the simplicity of this image that gives it real character and joy and delight and it's always something to consider, especially when you're photographing something like water. If you have a very simple, clear, defined, mirrored subject, it's so visually pleasing. And this image is just really showcasing that. Always remember when you're doing photography about simplicity. If you look at a lot of photography competitions and the winners of those photography competitions, a lot of the images are very simple. They've removed so many distractions and the subject is very clear and there's a clear emotive element in the image. And this image just reminded me so much of that. And that combined with the colour, I just had to include it in, in this, this top 10 roundup. Now, one thing I thought many of you would go out and photograph was water in macro style. And I was quite surprised there wasn't that many images in macro style. There was maybe about 20 in total. Which, which really shocked me because I, I just, I don't know, I expected more people to go out and do, do macro photography and photograph raindrops and stuff. But there wasn't many of you that did it. But one person that did do it and who submitted quite a few really, really interesting images was Chris Hunter. And this shot here was a particular one that stood out to me. You've got the beautiful autumnal colours here, a very simplistic blurred out background with no distractions. You've got this beautiful orange and yellow light, um, I'm guessing coming from other leaves behind this one, that's creating this beautiful almost frame around this leaf here. And then you've got the lovely pin sharp focus here on the top of the leaf with the beautiful water droplets and how the light is hitting them. And then you've got the blurred underneath of the, the leaf. And although it's blurred, you can still see the textures and patterns of the leaf within it. Again, a very simple image, but it works because it's simple, it's impactful. And I really wanted to showcase a macro shot in this top 10 roundup because Macro photography opens up a whole new world of opportunity for us. And as we're going through these challenges, macro photography could be something well worth exploring. And I think water probably would have been the best one to do it, but it's just giving you something interesting to think about. So yeah, this is a lovely image here and really capturing the, the smaller, more intricate details within nature. This image here really stood out to me for, for two reasons. One, because of the colours within it, the beautiful colour of the sea here, that turquoise colour, flat cam, you can see right through it, you can see the bottom of the sea here with all the ropes and the bits of seaweed, and then you've got these brightly coloured boats just floating on the water here. And the second thing that caught my eye here was the perspective. Now I'm guessing this shot was taken using a drone and of course drones aren't accessible to us all and there's a lot of kind of controversy around drones but there is sometimes images that come out of drone photography that just blow us away. I think this is one of the only images that was submitted to this challenge that was taken using a drone 
but it was one of the ones that stood out to me almost instantly and it's just it's a beautiful shot here a beautiful perspective lovely contrast in this image and it's just very nicely framed and yeah the more you can change your perspective when you're out with your camera the more interesting your images are going to become and you can do that on the ground easily just using your tripod or, or hand holding your camera but it's, it's nice from time to time to see something a little bit different and as I say I imagine this was taken here using a drone and it was, it was on the beautiful Cornwall coast which just oh the seaside theme here it really really spoke to me. Now this image here I love because it's nice to see people thinking outside of the box and photographing something or editing something a little bit differently. Photographing reflections is something that I've spoken about so much on this channel recently and many of you have been going out to, to photograph reflections for yourself and you've really really been enjoying it but what stood out to me in this image was the black and white effect. I think black and white photography, a bit like long exposure photography, is one of these areas where people either love it or they hate it, or they, they dabble in it now and again. But there's there's no denying that black and white photography has definitely got its place and there's, there's so much you can do with a black and white image to create atmosphere and interest. And this shot here, it was just really nice to see somebody photographing reflections, but then doing it in black and white. And you can really see in this image the contrast that's going on here. At the bottom of the image, the water is very flat and calm. and the top of the image, you're seeing some of the ripples of, of the water there, as I imagine that the wind was blowing. And it's just, it's a beautiful atmospheric image, this. And again, something just so different to what anybody else shot. So it, it really had to be included um, in this roundup. Now this shot here taken by Frank really stood out to me because this is the sort of image that many of us just walk past. You're walking past a, a stream, a lake, a pond of water and you've got a kind of a lot going on in this image. So a lot of, of lily pads here and grasses coming in and you've also got the reflections. But what really makes this shot is the texture. The texture of the water and how Frank has captured this. Now I don't know what shutter speed he used for this, but there's enough texture in this which to me would say it was taken in, in quite a high shutter speed and he potentially upped the texture in post-processing, I'm not sure. But at the top half of this image you've got this beautiful texture running through the water. It really, really stood out to me. And I almost feel like if I reach out and touch this image, I'll be able to feel the texture. And when you see somebody take an image like this, that's just so different, that you can, you feel like you can feel the image. There was just something about this that really stood out to me and I just, I just had to share it. Because it's, again, it's different, it's creative, it's artistic and the combination of that beautiful texture merged in with the lovely autumnal colours here. Just lovely. Really, really lovely. So that was the 10 images that really spoke to me. There was so many of them and there's about another 20 at least that I was really toying with and playing with and trying to work out which ones to include. So I'm now going to show you a slideshow of many of the other images that really caught my eye. Ones that are different, ones that are unique and ones that will hopefully inspire you all to see the world around you in new and exciting ways next time you're out with your camera.
what a month honestly i just again thank you to every single person who took part in this challenge i hope you all enjoyed it i hope you all got something out of it and i hope this video has inspired those of you who maybe didn't take part or if you did and need some more inspiration to really think about the many incredible opportunities that are out there to us as photographers and the many different ways that we can use our cameras to capture the world around us. There is no right or wrong way to do photography and that's why this isn't a competition because we're not competing against each other. We are here to inspire each other to see the world in new ways and I just love this and I'm so excited to see what you all come up with for the next challenge which as I say will be announced in my next video. So stay tuned for that, once again you'll have a month to complete it and once again there'll be a video like this at the end of it. So yeah, get involved if you're interested. Even if you don't think your images are that good, just submit them, just get out there, just try. And the main thing about this process is enjoying the world around you, it's seeing it in new ways and using photography to express yourself. So just, just get involved if you feel drawn to. Like I say, it's not a competition. Every single person who gets involved with this challenge, whether they share their images with me or not, you're all winners. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again next time.